What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area and sponsored by this fire truck going by in the background. Uh, <laughs> the Sharks lost, but it was the perfect tank. They sucked. They sucked a little less, came back, made it interesting, lost in regulation. Bada boom, bada bing. Bob's your uncle. They don't get standings points. Everybody feels a little bit better about certain aspects of the game. It's awesome. Uh, that was to Dallas on Saturday, but off the top, we have some news, all injury related, uh, which is fun uh, for not the people injured, but we'll cover some of that stuff off, then we'll dive into a little bit of a game talk at the end, and that'll be the show with us, two white dudes, talking hockey. Gotta love it. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Good old gambler. I'm your host, Cal Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is co-host JD, the Cranberry Silo Night Watchman, to my abandoned factory Night Watchman. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, in the episode "The Front," where the kids write uh, itchy and scratch episodes and put Grandpa's name on it. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. He comes in and they ask him what his world experience is, and he says he's a Cranberry Silo Night Watchman for 40 years <laughs> was his occupation. Hilarious in its own right. And then Abandoned Factory Night Watchman is what Millhouse becomes when Bart buys the Abandoned buys the Factory. factory. He's like, you were supposed to be watching. And he's like, I did watch it. I was watching it. And then it fell down. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, also, a good, a good joke is when he goes <laughs> to get the coffee and the rat comes out and then he grabs the coffee. He's like, well, still made it better than dad. <laughs> Very, uh, that was a deep Simpsons guy. I've been deep back into the Simpsons recently, actually. I don't know, nice. It's just, uh, just got the juices flowing. I've been continuing my Star Wars purge, wa- watching all the TV shows, all the movies as I prepare for Obi Wan. So, don't yes. you have a hot, hot, hot fire solo take? Uh, it's hot. Solo is a good movie. It's a really fun movie. So, nothing can be as bad as uh, whatever Andrew Berkshire said. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> saying Rogue One isn't a good movie. Get out of here. That man's was... never seen a Star Wars in his life. <laughs> <laughs> I $10. Watched, Go I, see I, a Star Wars. <laughs> I also just watched Duffless. Where I was like, that man's never had a Duff in his life. <laughs> That's so, so funny where Kennedy has the Duff and then Nixon's like, I uh, also like that particular brand of beer. <laughs> oh, that episode's amazing. Also, they're like, we have Duff, Duff Dry, Duff Clear. And it's it is all the one part. Life. The sucks though on the Disney Plus version because it's all no, like, they switched it. They, they, they fixed they, it. They, they, okay. switched, they fixed it back to the original. Okay, yeah, it's all ratio. Oh, anyway. Good times. The sh- uh, speaking of The Simpsons, a lot, a lot of TV watching for these guys coming up. <laughs> Kinejov. Notice I didn't say his first name because I can't remember if it's Alexei or Nikolai. <laughs> Nikolai. <laughs> Nikolai. <laughs> Nikolai Kinejov. Uh, new contract. New contract. Good for him. But still. Hospital bound. <laughs> Still in that rehab. Uh, they're hoping. I just he... assume he's in an iron lung by now. <laughs> they just have him. <laughs> yeah, just his head above. He's like in like the, the Vader, the Vader mask on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, he signed a one year, eight hundred fifty thousand dollar extension. Seems like just a good thing to do, even if he can never play again or something like that, because he got lost his whole year. Yeah, he had surgery on his original injury. Then now is sick. Well, he had a setback, and yeah. now he's sick with an illness of sorts. So, hope I, I think Shake Penny reported that he's supposed to be back skating by June. June. <laughs> oh, what boy. the hell is that? I know. Uh, so, hopefully, uh, gets back, gets ready for training camp next season. I, I think yeah. the big thing here with Kinejov is that. He was awesome last year in like his mm-hmm. limited, the Jacob Middleton, Mario Ferraro, come out of nowhere, dark horse. We also, we got to start coming up with candidates for next year. Yes. That's three years in a row. They've done it. I don't think anybody should expect him to just jump back in and be like, hello, can you back? There's a yeah. real possibility that he's just super rusty, 
maybe the injuries have taken the sickness have taken a big toll and he's just never the same guy um and yeah. he's forever in the hl totally real but i think the most important thing is that he just gets back to be able to play mm-hmm. uh, and that'll be in june so poor can poor can yeah poor can next mm-hmm. kevin lebank <laughs> What a story this is because <laughs> not playing hockey. <laughs> not playing hockey. It went from he may play on Saturday to he may be shut down for the season. <laughs> Real head snap of the uh <laughs> yeah. oh Kevin LeBanc's coming back. Oh Kevin LeBanc is not coming back. Mm-hmm. I really don't understand how he's like wasn't he skating? He was skating and practicing and stuff. Like he he hadn't been cleared for contact, but I guess uh, he was still getting a little bit of you know Brent Burns <laughs> was giving him a little bit of a contact to kind of get back into the flow of it. Yeah, he hadn't been like gotten his official official clear from the doctor, and I guess he was getting were, it last Thursday. Yeah, down in L.A. and I guess they were like, "Hey, buddy, let's let's pump the brakes on this." So, yeah, I'm a little yeah because it seemed like. Huh. How do you get that message out there that he's might be coming back? Because he, they were like, maybe back on Thursday. That's a maybe real thing. Saturday, how, if not, definitely back next week. How to, do you go from that to maybe like it doesn't make any sense? Do the doctors not talk to each other? Is Joe Will? What's your ship doing? I don't you know. Tighten up the ship, please. <laughs> because maybe we should go back to the Doug Wilson teal curtain where we just don't know anything and they're all yeah. dead forever until they're not. Yes, and they just Which like I- Mario Ferrara just magically just shows up. He's like, hey guys, I'm ready to play hockey. They should have yeah. just given him the rest of the season off. They, like they're going to keep Mario Ferraro not on that. Yeah, he's got. You he can tell him he's your employee. Just be like, sorry, bud. Uh, thanks yeah. for thanks for coming back. But like, yeah, you had a broken ankle. Just he had he had a puck to the face and had dental surgery, and he was like, "Can I play now?" <laughs> they got yeah, the full. Hockey, I can't stress it enough. Hockey players are dumb. They are dumb. Yes, we love them, but they are dumb. Oh, <laughs> eh, best sport, worst culture, mm-hmm. uh, by far. You should never listen to a hockey player when they're like, I'm ready to play. Patrice Bergeron played with a punctured lung. Eric Carlson played on a broken ankle for like two rounds of the playoffs. Dudes do this all the time. It's yeah. very stupid. Eric Carlson, we saw him in 2018 play on half a half a groin. Literally ripped the shit out of his groin and was like, I can do this. And we all saw him again in that Boston game, I think, uh, where like he's just like can't move and dudes are going around him. He looks like a pylon. Never listen to the hockey players. Do just just take their opinion out of it. Yep. Is my official stance. <laughs> you should. Point. Listen to hockey players if they tell you to eat built bars, though. Hockey podcasts that tell you to eat built bars. <laughs> we're not part of the. We're not. We're not hockey players. I'm a basketball player. JD is a Halo player. I ran in high school. Thank you very much. So, what was that like? 47 years ago. What was Steve <laughs> like Prefontaine like? Yeah, he was very nice. I do love Prefontaine. <laughs> that's that's good. Uh, Jesse Owens, nice guy. Yeah, he was. He took I'm my right. spot. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't be too upset about that. <laughs> Imagine being the guy. Imagine being the guy that gets beat up by Jesse Owens and just like a white dude, and just be like, "Oh, that could have been me," even though it wouldn't have made sense. No. The whole, like he was amazing, yeah. and also he was break, uh, yeah, yeah breaking thing. a bunch. Of, yeah, he's a, uh, in, in Nazi Germany, and you were the guy that lost to him. So, uh, yep. uh, whoops. Anyway, Bill Bars. Jesse Owens didn't have a Bill Bar because they weren't invented yet. But the good thing is, is that you can have Bill Bars. I can't believe I'm making a Jesse Owens reference in an ad read. Sorry, Bill Bar. You guys know the deal. They are tasty as shit. They are covered in 100% real chocolate, which makes them taste good because everybody's had that protein bar where you bite into it and it's like, ew, this is chalky. Oh, it tastes like chemicals. Oh, this is waxy. It's not good. Nobody wants any of that. But these ones don't because of that 100% real chocolate and they have dope flavors. Coconut brownie, peanut butter, double chocolate, mint, cherry barcia. JG just likes to say. If you're not feeling... The, the traditional protein, you can always go with a puff, which is the first ever protein infused marshmallow. And the good thing there is that they're also covered in 100% real chocolate and they have even better flavors because they have cinnamon churro, absolutely slaps. Who doesn't like cinnamon churro? Coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. You know our stance on cream pies, pro. And the good thing is, is that most built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein compared to your, your chocolate bars which have about 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. So go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Do you think Built Bar listens to this? Uh, us I hope. I hope so. <laughs> that was, if people don't go out and buy Built Bars because of that, nobody's buying Built Bars. I just hate to tell you. You got Jesse yeah. Owens. You got old-timey references. 
sexual innu- innuendos, <laughs> sex yeah. sells. I you said that tastiest shit. Yeah, exactly. Sex sells. Everybody knows that. Maybe we should do the podcast with uh, low cut shirts. I don't know. <laughs> lower <Just> cut. <laughs> lower cut. Yeah, lower cut shirts. Maybe I. Maybe I'm not wearing pants right now. <laughs> who, who could possibly say? <laughs> who, who among us? That's for that's up that's up to the people to decide. Um, speaking of pants, someone who won't be wearing hockey pants for a while. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I like to start a sentence and just find it along the way. Yes. Ozzy Weisblatt. Oh, that's a really weird alarm. Uh, it sounds like a UFO. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's being abducted by the Bill Bar. <laughs> oh no, the Bill Bar police are here. <laughs> so <Take it. laughs> I've been found out. <laughs> Subscribe to Lockdown Sharks. See ya. Uh, uh, you'll never take me alive. You just hear like bananas hitting the wall. Um, just like shoving a bill bar down my throat. Like, you will like this. Uh, man, this episode rules. It's so good. Uh, Ozzy Weisblatt. <laughs> Out for season. Uh, he had shoulder surgery. Yeah, shoulder surgery. Uh, second year in a row with, with year row. shoulder issues. The important thing here, though, uh, other than getting better, is that Prince Albert, they gave an opinion, and then the Sharks stepped in and also were like, we're also consulting on this matter. Uh, And the Sharks doctors consulted, and I think he's going to San Jose specifically for the surgery uh, and will be in San Jose. The thing here, he's not going back to juniors now. And If he was just going to go back to juniors, whatever, just let him marinate, I, I think this is a good indicator that the Sharks want him in San Jose. They want him on the Barracuda. They want him to start being around the teams. Um, and going forward, he's he's no longer going to be part of the junior situation. Yeah, I think it makes sense, especially, you know, if you have a bunch of guys who, like, live in, and train in San Jose, or more guys are starting to live and train in San Jose. And I think having Ozzy around, you know, while he's rehabbing, that way he can see the Sharks doctors and stuff and get him ready for the start of the season. That's the most important thing right now is for him to get back to being 100% healthy and yeah, I mean, this is a, sucks for him. Second season in a row. Definitely was not the season that he wanted with uh, Prince Albert. But, you know, we, we've kind of documented how bad Prince Albert was this season. And, you know, you as good as you are, you can't do everything on your team. And, you know, see one William Eklund, um, you know, so. The William yeah. Eklund takes are out of control. Yeah. <laughs> People have not watched a solitary second of, of U Gardens and they're like, oh, he didn't lead them to a promotion. He like didn't dominate. Re- 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 he didn't dominate. Yeah, no shit. I wouldn't dominate either if the most skilled person I was passing to was Marcus Sorensen. No, uh, he wasn't passing to the most skilled person. That wasn't who's passing. Yeah, so like yeah, Marcus Sorensen was their leading scorer. That should tell you something about the collective skill of the rest of the goddamn team. Yes, Marcus Sorensen, who couldn't say on the Sharks anyway. So yeah, um, get better, Ozzy. We'll see you. I'm very excited to watch you um, play on the Barracuda next. Dude, the Barracuda next year gonna be so much fun. Oh my God! Ozzy, so. Tristan, Bordalo, Co, Co, Cardwell, Cardwell, yeah. uh, various people that Bob hates with a passion for no reason. Your Leonard, <laughs> Sasha, Leonard, <laughs> Sasha, maybe Berkeley. Not. Berkeley's just going to be on the uh, <laughs> in the AHL, uh, which is a good place to start. Bob scratched Merkley in a meaningless game. Yes, and anytime you can play Nicholas Milosh and Black Edward Vlasic together, you have to do it. Jacob Begna looked like a pylon for four straight games. And what do you get rewarded with? 20 minutes of ice time, baby. Get so. I'm, all, I'm over it. I just I just can't. The lines. Plastics. The lines. Because, like, the thing. The line, that, uh, lines, hold on, JD. Write this down. The lines fucking suck. Uh, thanks. Okay. I don't care. They they blow. The Jonathan Dolan and Rudy were just average. Great. They may have been average. Jonathan Dolan played nine minutes and 36 seconds. And the line blender came out, like, five minutes into the game. He was also coming back from a head injury to his face and head injury area. And then you immediately throw him under the bus as soon as the game's over. Like there's holding people responsible and there's not where, where is Megna and Malosh and where's those guys getting told that they're average. They're awful. So I don't get it. The lines are terrible. The decision to who to play and who to scratch just baffling beyond belief. I I don't get it. I'm completely done with it. I'm, not going to speak on it again until we do our coaching episode in the off season. I just am super, super over it. I just, I just want one time like the, that brief moment in time when Todd McClellan was the Sharks coach for like four years, the beginning, it was awesome. I just want that back. <laughs> You're just like, Oh, let's play good players. Yeah. So speaking wanted- about, so Vlasic who had been playing really well with Merkley, um, 
in the five on five, Vlasic Corsi four in the so he played thirteen minutes and seven seconds of five on five time. Corsi four thirty percent, <laughs> six shot attempts That's allowed bad. fourteen. Um, actual shots three to eight, and then his partner Malash Corsi four. 34.78 in 14 minutes and 31 seconds of five on five time. Eight, uh, of course, the eight shot attempts, 15 allowed. Um, actual shots, five to eight. And I'm not saying Merkley is the best player on the face of the earth. He clearly has things he needs to work on. But literally after the last game, they talked about how he was like, yes, I have this to work on and I am working on it and using the vets and all that kind of stuff. And he had been playing better the last few games. And they yeah. said, Bob said, oh, it was a numbers thing. I hope you look at these numbers and go, wow, they were really bad because you, you... these muffins taste bad. These, <laughs> these numbers muffins. are bad. Like yes. you can easily do this. It's very, it's very easy to see. Wow. My lines suck. Yeah. If you have to line blender like 10 minutes into the game, maybe have some self-reflection that your lines are bad. <laughs> However, Reedy, <laughs> Sasha, who's the other person on that line? Uh, Reedy, Sasha, Leonard to start the game. We love Why it. Why can't we have that? <laughs> we love Why it. Can we have that for a whole game? Why do you have to change that? Well, Sasha deserved because he got bumped up to the second line, and he deserved. He was playing well, and he deserved it. So, um, good. Sasha. Sasha's been really good. So, um, yeah. I mean, so, let's let's talk about Sasha. So he played 13 minutes, uh, 16 seconds of five on five time. Corsi four 14 to nine for 60.87 percent. Um, shots for eight to five was on. F- you know, helped to score that goal. Logan Couture <laughs> just stole that goal. <laughs> stole absolute sniping of a goal. Yeah, but uh, while he was on the ice, five scoring chances, uh, four three scoring chances allowed, two high danger chances for compared to zero allowed. So, yeah, and you know, after the game, Couture talked about how Sasha's been, you know, improving his skating. He's never going to be a good skater. That's just how it is. But okay. Can I, can I just point something out? Yes. They're like, he reminds us of Paz skating. Yeah. That's not a compliment. And all the beat writers out there, relax. That's yeah. not a compliment. Uh, nothing about that is a compliment. Joe Pavelski could not skate. Nope. Sorry guys. You guys love Pavelski. And Pavelski was great for the Sharks for a long time. He was sweet at, oh, I started again. Uh, nice. He was sweet at tipping goals and was awesome and a great leader. Dude could not skate. Nope. Still kicking ass, though, at the age of 30. Yeah, totally fine. But like when people yeah. say he, his skating reminds us of Pav, don't be like, wow, yes, Pavelski. That's it's not good. <laughs> yes. So not good. No, not good. But Pavelski knows where to go. Slowly gets there. So knows where to go. And that could that could just be Sasha, where he's just like you could, you know, uh, Shang had a really good article about how Sasha is just thinking the game better and, and being, you know, just play with more confidence and stuff like that. So you know, it's good to see a guy who's, who's worked really hard in the AHL and he's worked on his game and, and, you know, being rewarded with that ice time and getting to play that second line minutes. But um, before we continue, we're going to talk uh, about uh, Brent Burns, who's having a bit of a moment right now. And then our, our poor went out for the Capo Kakadin love train <laughs> love. So, but before we get to that, let's take a break and talk about our friends over at bet online. It's it's national championship day today. So if you want to go put some money down on whichever team you think is going to win, Kyle, who do you got tonight? UNC. <laughs> I have Kansas. <laughs> so um, you can do that over at Bet Online. They've also got uh, Masters coming up. Um, it, you can also go check out baseball odds. Um, NHL and NBA playoffs are right around the corner. So head over to Bet Online. They're your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. I can't I can't believe Carpet has got their neon hooks into you and you tease the segment. Mm, I know. Nobody likes that. Our brand is not that. No. Our brand, our brand is, our brand is various <laughs> jokes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a wide selection of jokes. Uh, let's quickly talk about Cockin and first for reverence. Uh, he might suck. <laughs> this is not a good first pair. <laughs> <for Woof! him. laughs> the first one I'll let slide because that was 
like he hurdle let rims it slide the pass. right through his legs hurdle rims the pass none of the defenders go back uh take so it was malash and vlasic were the defense none of them go back to like go get the puck along the boards along you know behind the goalie and then dallas is just like here <laughs> pass to the yeah but after that that was just not a good night from from Kakinen. and you know it's it sucks that we were because he played really well the previous two games and maybe maybe he's just a away goalie he can only play maybe away games and Ryan replace him <laughs> Ryan replace homes let me go uh the Kakinen experience might be a heavy heavy roller coaster yeah. the jury's the jury's still out after three games the also win, also out. also winless uh yeah. an, an auspicious start for Kakinen. but Brent Burns he's been good I'm... recently you got to give it up Yes, we guy. we have been very critical of Brent Burns and his, especially his usage. Elite, but, elite talent, zero hockey IQ. But lately, Brent Burns, I think the key might be here with him is that they're kind of limiting his ice a little bit. We're not seeing these like crazy twenty eight minute, you know, twenty six, twenty eight minute nights. We're seeing so past five games for Brent Burns where he's really kind of been on on this run. So he's gotten. Uh, three goals and so the past six games, sorry. He's got three goals and two assists during that time, including three goals in three games. So he has, so against Dallas, 23 minutes, 14 seconds. Good. That's good. Colorado, 26, 28. I mean, I know they, there was like, it's Colorado, whatever. So still a goal. Arizona. Notably bad, but still they lost that game. Had a goal, twenty-one fifty-one. When was the last time you saw Brett Burns play under twenty-two minutes a game? <laughs> Should be more frequent coming down the stretch here. Uh, yep. But I think you're onto the right track here. Like it's it, especially because the Sharks are still relying on. We don't know what they think internally. Yep. They should be very cautious and not being like, "Yep, plug this guy in. He's going to be awesome for us." So one way to help your internal, oh god, he might be bad soon. He's 30. How old are you? 35? 37? He is 37. I will be 37 in a couple of weeks. So yes. Uh a way to a way to limit that is not playing him a thousand minutes a game. Yeah. And so giving him 21 if, minutes a game. So even especially like, in a season where you're out. Yeah. So November, like you know, ESPN night, they break down his time on ice by month. So November, he played 26 minutes, 40 seconds average time on ice for the entire month of November. December 26, 23. January. Uh, 24 39. Um, during that time, he had two goals, four assists. Um, February 26 48, time on ice, uh, 11 points. March 27 42, uh, eight points. And then April 25 45, seven points. And then, so I think if you get him in that like 24 to 25 minute range, you know, especially getting a little older now. Um, I think that's where you can kind of maybe help to maximize Brent Burns where you're, you know, like he's not, always, he's not going to be the stellar defenseman, but like defensive defenseman, but he can still contribute offensively. And we've seen him do that as of late. And I, th I think hopefully having like guys like Ferraro back playing Carlson, Merkley can help take the pressure off of him when, if they start to actually ice him more, like guys like that can help Brent Burns. So that way you can maybe try to like, elongate this cliff that's coming so <laughs> elongate the runway to the cliff so nope no notes no no it's perfect very well done <laughs> i blacked out what happened <laughs> uh no you're you're exactly right you got to try to extend brent birds out especially if you're trying to make playoffs next year that's your because you don't want the last thing you want we saw with vlasic where it's just like you hammered him you know we're gonna play vlasic 25 minutes a night and then now you can barely get if you get 15 out of them, it's you know. It yeah. No. Anyway, if you would like to tell us we're smart and handsome and wise, funny, girthy, <laughs> incredible lovers, whatever you want, whatever you're feeling, mm -hmm. you can do that on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at Locked on Sharks. YouTube, Locked on Sharks. Uh, I don't know. We're going towards 700 somehow. I think we're at 670. 670 right now yep nice yep. only only 330 people away from making some cash money yes yeah, we're two-thirds of the way past the two-thirds mark kyle we are two-thirds of the way very good we're the three-quarter pole 
Uh, no, <laughs> the the two thirds full. <laughs> Stupid thing. It's, um, if you want to, if you want to listen to us, Locked On Sharks uh, on Spotify, Apple, Amazon. Uh, email Locked On Sharks at gmail.com. I think we got one. I don't know. Can't remember. We did get a review. Oh, mm. what the review say? This was a good one. I like this one. This was a good. Yes, short and sweet. Um, so scrolling. It's funny because I think they titled it the content boys. No, they uh, titled it. This is a review. Oh, five stars. <laughs> even, even better. Yes. Um, from Jay Peacock nine, the content boys bring the heat. They make being a sharks fan bearable. Love the draft profiles. No notes. 10 out of 10, <laughs> except for you could have said how funny we are, but anyway, and girthy. Nine. And, girthy. <laughs> and good lovers. <laughs> exactly. Always mention that we're good lovers. Generous, <laughs> generous, gentle yet thorough. Yes. Um, JD's at my fry hole. Kyle, is that Kyle Demetrius? But don't follow him as I'm closing. Oh, no, Kyle, bullshit! I'm, I'm, I'm over <laughs> nine hundred now. Yeah, I'm closing uh, in on you. I know. I think you're like twenty five away. Thirty four. Thirty. <laughs> who's, who's counting though? Right? Am yeah. I right? So. Uh, Go check out the Locked On Fantasy Hockey podcast. You want to get ready for the fantasy hockey playoffs. Um, also, they have fun bet stuff that they do every day. Go check out the Locked On NHL Now. So if you want to get a taste of what happened um, the previous night around the NHL, um, you'll see me on there as well whenever the Sharks play. Kyle, too busy to do that. So, <laughs> And go check out any other amazing podcasts such as Locked On Braves. Sure. Bye, friends. (laughs) May your erections be long and strong.